to hear the word of the Lord and get an understanding of his word that God has given tonight. You have your Bibles. We're looking at Mark chapter 5, verse 1 through 8 will be our scripture text. And then James 4, verse 7. Again, that is Mark chapter 5, verse 1 through 8, and then James chapter 4, verse 7. Again, I appreciate all of you and your giving to the house of God and your labor. It is not in vain. We appreciate you. We thank God for your skills, for your commitment, and your dedication. Yes. Thank God for what He's put in you to do. Yes. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes. Mark chapter 5, reading in the KJV. At times I may go to the New Living to give understanding. Mark chapter 5, verse 1 to 8. The Bible says. And they came over unto the other side of the sea in the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship immediately, there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs. This is where he lived, in the tombs. And no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Verse 4, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains. And the chains had been plucked asunder by him. Basically, he was able to rip off the chains or the shackles. And the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. Could nobody tame him, hold him down, stop him. Verse 5, and always night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, meaning he's in a far place, he's in a dark place, and what was he doing? Crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, when he saw Jesus, he ran and worshiped him. Yes. Brothers and sisters, that means whatever you're dealing with, you can still get to Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. Whatever is trying to oppress you, yes. you can still get to Jesus. And cry with a loud voice and said, now notice, something in him is crying out. What did it say? What have I to do with thee, Jesus? Thou son of the most high God. The Bible says, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. That spirit is saying, don't torment me. Verse 8, for he said unto him, come out of the man. Thou unclean Spirit, come out of him. James chapter 4, verse 7. The word of the Lord said, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. If you allow me, look at the scripture saying of God. The devil is not moving until we do what? Submit yourselves. He won't go anywhere until we submit ourselves. Once you submit, then you can resist. But if you and I don't submit, you can't resist him. You can't stop him. He's still going to attack you. He still is going to bother you. He still will torment you. He still will try to oppress you. 
But when you and I submit, that's when we're able to resist. That's when he will flee from you. I want to talk to you from this subject tonight. Maybe serious. I believe that it is. The unspoken epidemic. The unspoken epidemic. The unspoken epidemic. I had a subtitle, Deliverance is Available. Deliverance is Available. Let's pray. And let's ask God to help us to receive this word tonight on this youth service. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We love you and we give you glory, honor, and praise. Tonight, God, I wish that there were more in the house. I wish that God this place one day would be filled yes. with youth. Yes. Father, whatever needs to be done, I'm asking that you will use, Lord God, your people. Yes. That the souls of man, God, can hear the word of God. Father, I believe that once they hear it, it will be an impression on their hearts. I believe when the word of God goes forth, that many can make the final decision of where they are spent eternity. I pray tonight, talk to us, God, and everyone in this room. And whatever God is coming their way, whatever the issue is, deliverance is available. You're there for them if they want to be delivered. Yes. Father, I'm talking to the saint of God tonight. Yes. No, we are not possessed. But we can be oppressed. Will you help us tonight to receive and understand? Make it clear to us, God. Awake us now. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Can you clap your hands one more time in Jesus' name? The unspoken. Again, the unspoken. Epidemic. It is the unspoken epidemic. Mm -hmm. Let me first of all give you scripture tonight before I start to let you know what we're dealing with. Many may not understand and many may not know. And so for those who do not, young people, I want you to know what we are dealing with. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness and where is it located in high places can you take that same scripture and put it in the NLT let's make it simple again the Bible says for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. There are some unseen things that you and I don't see that we're fighting against. Against mighty powers in this dark world. This dark this ungodly world against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Let me talk to you from this subject, the unspoken epidemic. There are many epidemics that have come. Some are not talked about as much, but they are in the world. They are in our nation. They're in our communities. And brothers and sisters, they're in our homes right now. Epidemics. Many things that have been shocking throughout the years that we hear, that we see, that we get word of, that we find out. Question is, what do we mean when we say an epidemic? Basically, it is a widespread occurrence of an infectious disease in a community at a particular time. Another one, a widespread occurrence of something that is deadly to the human family. 
a widespread occurrence, something that is happening. It's happening. It's happening around us. And what is it doing? It is actually killing. It is actually affecting. It is actually troubling the human family. Different epidemics has affected us over the years. For example, over 700,000 people take their own life each year. 700,000 people commit suicide. They take their life. That's one person, watch this, every 40 seconds. Every 40 seconds, somebody is committing suicide. So if you look at your top, your, your, your watch and the clock, and you kind of count to 40, somebody tried to kill themselves. Or somebody died. Whether they hung themselves, whether they took many pills, whether they found a gun, whether they slit their wrist, whether they slit their neck, they've committed suicide. They do this because they think that they're actually getting away from their problems. Not knowing when they open their eyes in hell, they'll have big problems. CDC reported in 2021 that the 11th leading cause of death was suicide. 48,183 Americans died by suicide, meaning they took their life for some reason that those who they left behind can only assume why they did. We assume why they did. And even if they left a letter, they don't say everything. Whenever somebody leaves a letter, they don't say everything. If you can hold those pictures, please. They don't say everything. People think that they know, but they don't say everything. In 2021, there was 1.7 million attempts of suicides. And according to statistics, there is a much higher epidemic happening more now, watch this, with younger people committing suicide. Yes, yes. You see a lot of young people committing suicide today. What is a child going through that wants to make themselves, to kill themselves rather? What is a teenager going through? What is your 10 year old going through? Or your 11 year old going What is your five year old going through to make them want to kill themselves? To hang themselves? I know, and I hope you know, the devil is a liar. How many know that the devil is a liar? He's a liar. Another unspoken epidemic around that is not spoken about or confronted, especially specifically in the church, is called this thing, ecstasy or mollies. Mom, you may not know this, but maybe you do. But you could have a child, a daughter right now, that is actually on this particular drug. This particular drug affects the persons, watch this, the way that they breathe, the way that they function, how they eat, it affects their mind, and they will take it with other drugs, drugs, marijuana, cocaine. This drug right here is an epidemic in our world today. Many take it for enjoyment. They take it for enjoyment. Something that they do looks like candy, looks like little medicine. Whether it comes like this or comes in a capsule, there are some that will not actually take it this way by eating it, but then they will store it. It is an epidemic today. College students, when you go to school, it'll be all around you. It'll be all around you. Be careful. They'll slip it in your drink. When you're thinking you're having a good time. I say to you, stay focused. Go to school for the degree and get out. 
Some will take this drug just to get away, just to feel different. I read an article that said these words, the club. Usually they have it in the club. Usually people will take it before they go out on the club night. They'll take it before the club. The club drug mommy, which is a street name for the drug MDMA. But the medical, those who are medical, I don't know how to, I won't pronounce it, I'll mess it up. But MDMA has been linked to an increasing number of deaths recently. This is very troubling for a number of reasons. Why? Not least of which is the fact that many of the deaths related to the designer drug are occurring within teens and young adults. It's happening with the teens and the young adults. Mom, you're asking, I don't know why she's acting like that. She's on mommy. I don't know why he's acting like that. He's on mommy. I don't know why they're functioning or behaving like that. They're on this drug called mommy. Something is wrong. Somebody needs to talk to them. No, they need deliverance. I don't know why they're depressed today, but then in another day they act like this. And possibly on mama. This tragic instance have left many parents and concerned friends wondering exactly what Molly is and why it has it risen to popularity as of the late. Although MDMA has been used in the United States since 1970s, when some therapists thought that it may have some maybe cycle from a pseudocode benefits for disorders like post-traumatic stress disorder. They always are trying to pump you with some drugs when you tell them, I'm feeling like this. Something foreign, hear me, no matter what they give you, cannot deal with your psychological problems. It's a spiritual thing. They will give you drugs for depression. They'll give you drugs for this problem and for that problem. And all it is doing is deadening the situation for a little while. But you have to take the drug again for you to get out of that place. This is why people drink alcohol, why they smoke marijuana, why they do these things. Why? Because it takes them out of a place that they don't want to face. Reality. Reality. Let me explain. The drug rose to popularity as a record, record, recreational drug in the 1990s with the arrival of rave culture. So like at the concerts, you would see them drugged up. You would see them having orgies. You would see them doing sexual favors and doing this out of their mind. People waking up the next day not knowing what they did. A social Phenomenal, barred what they say from the Europeans. As MDMA became popular at the rave events, it often showed up in the form of a drug called ecstasy, which is really a press pill that often combined MDMA and a wide variety of other drugs, which included heroin, which caused hallucination, and drugs like LSD. Perhaps because these pills vary quite a bit from one to another and often carry with them the severe side effects. They, they lost popularity and have now been replaced, watch, by Molly. Molly now is the new twist on the drug or the new name, which is powdered version of MDMA that is often snorted or you can put it in a capsule or you can have what it looks like a little pill or medicine or vitamin. Our young people today have been caught up in this epidemic. And there is a truly need for deliverance from this epidemic. Saints of God, hear me. Your son and daughter. Wives and husband, hear me. Your husband, your wife can be on this particular drug. It is an epidemic today. Somebody say that, but we're in the church. 
come to find out people, those that are in the church, and they open up themselves, they too can be involved in this as well. Trying to deaden whatever they're going through. Deaden whatever they're dealing with. Another epidemic, and this is what we're going to talk about tonight, that I would like to focus on is this thing called cutting. I'm going to approach this thing because I have a problem with what the devil is doing. We deal with this epidemic today where people are cutting themselves. Cutting themselves. Your friend sitting next to you, cutting, bruising herself. Maybe she's in a relationship and he's not treating her right. Maybe she loves him, but he doesn't love her. Maybe he's upset, he's being bullied. Maybe people of God, she is upset in the marriage. So she starts to cut him. Although it may not be the situation, it may go back a long way, but something is happening. It's an epidemic. Self-harm, self-mutilation. Cutters are those who cut themselves, mutilate their bodies to deal with their feelings or their emotions or what they're going through. It is used as an outlet to relieve stress. To relieve stress? Yes. Anxiety. It's an outlet to relieve anger, hurt, and it gets other people's attention. If I hurt myself, maybe they'll get an understanding. If I hurt myself, maybe what I'm feeling can now subside because I'm feeling this. Maybe if I hurt myself, mutilate myself, then maybe this pain will stop. This is truly an epidemic among the human family. Notice the article, research regarding this. Self-harm involves a person damaging their body by cutting burning, scratching, or practicing any other behavior that results in pain or injury. Different motivators can encourage people toward self-harm, such as feeling overwhelmed or numb. I'm overwhelmed, I feel numb. This is what the article says. Though self-harm is not a mental health disorder, this is what they're saying. It is a common symptom of many psychological conditions. Self-harm statistics and facts show the widespread trend of self-harm throughout the United States. Even though self-harm has been studied extensively for over decades, they're studying why are people cutting themselves. Findings are never entirely accurate because of the stigma and shame they still surround self-injury. The actual rates are likely quite higher than those currently reported. One analysis of self-injury across more than 40 countries, this is what they found. They found about 17% of all people will self-harm during their lifetime. The average age of the first incident of self-harm is 13 years old. At 13, you start seeing them harming themselves. Mom, dad, you and I will say, what's wrong with you? Why are you doing this? Do you not feel the love that I've given you? Why are you behaving like this? Why are you taking a razor blade, cutting yourself? Why are you putting harm on yourself? Why are you thinking like this? What's making you act like this? I think I need to take them to the doctor. I think I need to take them to someone so that they can talk to them. I think I need to get some professional help. You go and see professional help. What do they do? They diagnose you. They'll give you some medicine and they will tell you come back and see me in a few days. Let's see how that drug is doing for you. The drug usually makes a person a zombie. Which means they really just don't know where they are or what they're doing. It is an epidemic. 45% of people use cutting as their method of self-injury. About 50% of people seek help 
for their self-harm, but only from friends instead of professionals. Matter of fact, let me tell you, mom and dad, that your son or your daughter could be doing this to themselves, but they won't talk to you. They won't talk to the help that they need, but their peers or friends know that they're doing this. They know that they're cutting themselves. And they're hoping that they will get better. But they will not. This is an epidemic. Something else is happening. The question is how do we deal with these different issues? First, I believe there is nothing that we can go through or that things can, can come up on us that, can, that we cannot be delivered. I believe that God is the answer to all things. I believe that Jesus is the answer for all things. I believe that there is no doctor that can do what needs to be done better than Jesus. I believe Jesus is the answer. Is there anybody that still believes that Jesus is the final answer? Jesus is the first answer, the second answer, the third answer. He's the final answer. Jesus is the only answer. I believe everything. That is wicked comes from these things right here. Number one, our sinful nature. Wickedness is all up in this. Wickedness is all up in this. Wickedness is all in this flesh, in this mind, in this heart. Wickedness, deceitfulness. Deception, yes. sin is all in this. Yes. Paul even said, a man that was baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. People of God, the Bible says in Romans chapter 7 verse 18. For I know that in me, that is in my what? My flesh. Yes. Dwelleth no good thing. Nothing is yes. good yes. in this place. But the will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. I want to do what's right, but, but I can't. Verse 19, for the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Why am I doing this and I'm supposed to be saved? What's in me is the Holy Ghost. But what is it in is wicked flesh. Now if I do that I would not, is it no more than I am that do it? But sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I when I do good, guess what? Evil is always present. Like when I'm worshiping God and I pray, sometimes a thought in the middle of praying comes across my mind. How is that when I'm praying? How is it that we can function this way and worship, but in the next second, we turn into the evil? Yes. Yes. How is it that we can come to the altar and we can cry before God and the tears are real, but as soon as we leave, I put a volley in my mouth. When I'm going through hardship, I was there in the presence of God who can help me? But people of God, I leave with the depression still on me. And I'm saying, let me figure it out. You can't figure it out because you will never figure it out. Because the situation is that you and your flesh will never fix it. Yes. Yes. Only God can. Yes. Only God can. The question is how desperate you want to be delivered from That's right. it is like the woman with the issue of blood yes. 12 years I'll use her she was not able to be delivered day one spent all that she had on money for doctors to heal and no one could do it maybe she went saw some physician saw someone and they couldn't do it this is why I say stop putting your trust in that which is in the world and put your trust back into Jesus Put your trust in the Lord and Him alone, people of God. Hear me what I'm telling you. Somebody has introduced to your door these things. 
somebody has introduced to your son these things. Someone in here right now is dealing with these things. Has dealt with these things. Are going to deal with some of these things. It is an unspoken epidemic. Nobody wants to talk about it. But we're going to address it. For I delight in the law of God. I can be inward man. But I see another law in my members. What is that doing? It's warring against the law of my mind. And what is it? It's bringing me into captivity. To the law of sin. Why am I thinking about suicide? Why am I always thinking about death? Why am I depressed? When did I get like this? When did I feel like this? Yes, people hurt people. People do things. But people are surrounded and people have sin in them. This is why they behave the way that they do. Because we have this flesh. And until God delivers us, we'll be in this flesh until the trumpet sounds. But I don't want you to be discouraged. Because he's given us a remedy called walking in the spirit. Amen. This is why we tell people, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you're not going to survive. Right. If you and I don't have the Holy Ghost, and we don't allow that Holy Ghost that we got this to lead and guide us, we won't survive. Okay, you will not survive without allowing the Holy Ghost to lead you. You will not survive when you go back to school if you don't allow the Holy Ghost to lead you. You will not survive, watch this, at the end of the summer if you don't have the Holy Ghost leading you. You're not going to survive till graduation if you don't let the Holy Ghost lead you. You're not going to survive if you don't bring the Holy Ghost up and everything that you've learned back home. You will not survive in these streets. You're not going to survive till next year if you and I don't allow the Holy Ghost and the Word of God to dictate every moment second of our lives. We need help. We are in an epidemic right now. And God is letting us know, you better call me while you have time. Call me while I am near. Because when he's not near, you and I get no help. He says, I'm worried. Oh, Richard, man that I am. Who should deliver me from the body of this death? Help me. I'm struggling. Why am I doing this? Why am I cutting? Why do I want to bring harm on myself? Number two, the influence or the devouring of the wicked one. The other thing that we deal with, but also with the flesh, is the temper. Bible says in 1 Peter 5 and 8, be sober. Somebody say, what's wrong with a little wine? Be sober. What's wrong with doing be sober? Because it is with the mind that we serve the law of God. Amen. If I ain't got my mind, I can't serve it. Right. Uh -huh. If we has marijuana has tainted my mind, I can't serve it. Okay. If I'm on mountains, I can't serve it. If you and I sitting there watching and playing these games, young people, that are ungodly games, helping us to kill people, shoot people, blood splatter, blood, hearts pulling out. If you and I allow us to do this, if we do this, mom and dad, let them do that. If you let them watch this, we let them watch cartoons. We let them watch cartoons that are really adult cartoons. And I sit there and say they devilish cartoons. Amen. You sit there and let your child watch SpongeBob. SpongeBob ain't never been a child's cartoon. We sit there and watch them and let them do this and let them watch this and do this. We think it is cartoon because it's animated. It is from Satan himself. We're in an epidemic. We're in an epidemic. Social media has caused us to be in an epidemic, but be sober. Be vigilant. Be watchful. Because your adversary, the devil, what is he doing? As a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He wants to devour you, Brother Tavares. Sister Janae, he wants to devour you. He wants to devour you. He wants to devour you. He wants to devour you, Sister Kanisha. He wants to devour you. 
He wants to take you out. He wants your mind. If he can get a hold of your mind, he got you. He wants you. He wants to take your mind. And once he gets your mind, then he gets your body. And with your body comes your soul. Do you hear what I'm saying? This is why I say you and I got to fight for the mind. I got to fight for the mind. I got to make sure my mind don't go in certain places that when you do, I need to rebuke the thought. I need to rebuke and I need to repent. God, I'm, I'm sorry. Father, that thought right there was not God. You say, but that can happen all day. I'm telling you, every day, all day, repenting for everything that comes across. If you thinking that people up in here is living holy all up in here, that devil is alive. We are fighting for myself. I'm fighting for my salvation. I'm fighting for my soul. My mind don't belong to him. My body don't belong to him. My heart does not belong to him. My life does not belong to him. It belongs to him and him alone. And I'm not sharing it with anybody else. But if you don't like to fight, you'll smoke one for what reason? You'll pop one for what reason? Real quick. You'll grab it. You'll cut, cut, cut. Grab a sleeve and put it over it. Put band-aids on. Yes. Nobody knows. It's an epidemic. Yes. Be sober. Yes. Be vigilant. Be watchful. Be seeking. Who's weak? Yes. Who has that problem? Yes. That young man whose father is not in his life. Yes. He doesn't even know why situations are the way it is. Yes. Yes. So watch this. He needs an outlet. Yeah. He wants to act like, watch this, he's cool. Maybe sometimes they'll act like they're hard. Yeah. Far from it. Mm -hmm. Did you hear what I just said? Far from it. Amen. They're not. They're not hard like that at all. I don't care how they wear their hair. I don't care how they wear their clothes. I don't care how they talk. I don't care how they perceive themselves. Far from it. Yeah. Easily, bendable, broken, balled up. Yeah. Not at all. But they're taking these things or doing these things because it's an outlet. Yes. So tonight my assignment is to expose and bring an opportunity of deliverance to the mind of those that the enemy is troubling. To bring peace in the heart, mind, and soul. And I want to get this word to the city because people of God in this city we deal with what is called mental yes. problems. Yes. Yes. Mental yes. issues. Yes. Yes. I'm saying it's a demonic yes. spirit. Yes. Uh -huh. No need to go see a shrink or a doctor. Come see Jesus. Amen. Yes. No need to go and pay any copay. It's free when you come to see Jesus. You ain't got to stand in line. You can get it when you walk in the door. Yes. Just come and see Jesus. Tell your neighbor real quick, just see Jesus. Tell your neighbor, just go see Jesus. Tell your neighbor, stand there until Jesus heals you and delivers you. So I'm going to talk about this thing. Self-harm is a form of, watch this, you don't know this, but self-harm is a form of worship. Self-harm is a form of worship. Those who do this, you don't know that you are Worshipping something. Yep. Just like when we come in here and we clap our hands and praise God. We're worshipping Him. Yes. When there's something else that wants your worship. Something else that wants you to worship. And the way that it wants you to worship is different from the way we worship the true and the living God. I'm going to show you. When we worship the true and the living God. Watch this. Healing comes. Deliverance comes. Do you hear what I'm saying? When I run to Jesus' feet, healing can take place. Deliverance can take place. When I get in the presence of Jesus, watch this, healing. Every wicked spirit or thing that is unclean, he can take it from me. But the opposite side of that, hear me, uh, that other type of thing that's taking place, uh, when we started manipulating or when we start mutilating,
mutilating our bodies, cutting ourselves. It's a form of worship. It's a form of us bowing down and worshiping because Satan does not deliver us. He oppresses right. us. Satan does not cleanse us. He makes us feel dirty. Satan does not bring conviction. He brings condemnation. And I come to tell you when somebody is doing that, they're showing worship to that God. And I come to tell you nobody else needs to get your worship. And God doesn't cause us to afflict our bodies in that way. Yes, by fasting and praying. But mutilating your body. Taking drugs, people of God. Shrinking things that cause your mind to go in other places. I come to tell you God wants us to be delivered. If there's anybody going through this tonight, you got to come and say, God, you're going to do it tonight. If I'm your daughter, if I'm your son, I don't ever want to think of this again. I want my mind to be free. So number one, self-harm, and we're going to go home. Self-harm yeah. unto idols. It's in the Old Testament. Moses said in Leviticus 19 and 28, you shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead. This was unto the dead. I come to tell you, many people are doing things and they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. They don't know what they're doing. This is one of those things I say all the time and I know I, I, I don't get slapped for this. Sometimes you'll see it, it's been a tradition, which is what I talked about in the morning. You will go down to the cemetery and talk to Uncle Bob. Uncle, how you doing? He can't hear you. Unk, just going through some things ain't got nobody else to talk to he can't hear you he can't hear you I don't know if I'm gonna, you're not going to like me it's Uncle Bob's birthday today he doesn't have any more birthdays he doesn't hear you I know I know I'm touching sentimental you, yes, yes, you are. Yes. But I'm giving you truth. Yes. Because the scripture tells us the yes. dead know nothing. They can't respond or say anything yes. to you on this side. Yes. You can't get any advice or any counsel. Uh -huh. Here was another one. No, Just a side note. I believe Uncle Bob is looking down at me. <laughs> Uncle Bob is in the same place that you left him. Ain't nobody looking down on you but Jesus. Stop asking for Uncle Bob to watch over you and ask Jesus. Be with me, Lord. Go with me, Jesus. Be with me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Be there for me, Lord. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. Saints of God, this is why, young people, we don't get tattoos. Amen. This is why when you go into college, people want to get involved in fraternities, been there, done that. And we put brands on us. Yeah. We put tattoos on us. You think about all the things that I went through and I sit there and say, why did I let anybody do that to me? It didn't do anything for me. It won't do anything for you. They'll try to tell you you can get a job and you can have connections. None of that gave me anything. But the book lets me know that this very thing it is done in a way that it worships false gods. First Kings chapter 18, verse 24. Is this okay? Yes, sir. Mom, dad, is this okay? Yes, yes, it is. The book says 
And if you know anything about this, this is when Elijah was confronting these 400 prophets, false prophets of Baal. Elijah is letting them, and here's a showdown. Y'all calling y'all God Baal? Call. And I'm going to call the Lord of hosts. I'm going to call the Lord God Almighty. I'm going to call God. I'm going to call Jehovah. I'm going to call him. And the God that answered by fire, let him be God. The book says that these people, 400 prophets, are calling Baal. People of God, the Bible says in 1 Kings 18, make it simple. They call on the name of your God, little G. And I will call on the name of the Lord, Yahweh. The God who answers by setting fire to the wood is the true God. And all the people agree. The Bible says in verse 25, Then Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, You go first, y'all go first, since you think your God is God, but there are many of you. It's just one of me, is what Elijah said, and it's about 400 of y'all. Choose one of the bulls and prepare it and call on the name of your God. But do not set fire to the wood. The Bible says in verse 26, so they prepared one of the bulls and placed it on the altar. Then they called on the name of who? Baal. They called on the name of Baal from morning until noon time. They called Baal all day. Oh Baal, oh Baal, oh Baal, oh Baal, oh Baal, oh Baal, 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 Baal. But Baal was not answering them because Baal is a dead God. Baal is not the true and the living God. You want to know what Baal is connected to? Baal is connected to Baal's above. Baal's above. Baal's above is the Lord of the flies or the prince of demons. That's who they call Jesus in the scripture. He does this with the power of Baal's above. But people of God, Baal, Baal is the prince of demons. People of God, they're calling the prince of of demons, that fertility so called God, that God is not the true God but there was no reply of any kind, I come to tell you people of God, hear me brothers and sisters, when you grab that razor blood, or when you grab that knife, and you start to go cutting, what you're looking for is answers and relief, what you're looking for is answers and relief you need something to be able to answer the stress and the overwhelming feeling uh, that you're going through. Uh, you think it's happening. Uh, you think things are happening uh, because in this worship the drums were beat uh, and they were beating the drums. Uh, all bail. Uh, you're thinking you're getting an answer uh, but there is no true reply. Uh, you're going to do this over and over uh, until you struck the wrong vein. Uh, until you strike the wrong vein. Uh, and goodbye, night night. Uh, we will never see you again. Uh, and what is the devil doing? Uh, he says, I got this one going to hell with me. Uh, oh, I got this one right here. Uh, you didn't kill yourself. Uh, you didn't rob yourself from salvation. Uh, you're going to hell with me. Uh, the Bible says, then they dance hobbling around the altar. They had me. Uh, about noontime, Elijah began mocking them. Uh, Y'all have to shout louder. Uh, for surely he is a God. Uh, perhaps he is the daydreaming. Uh, or he's relieving himself. Maybe he's using the bathroom. Or maybe he is away on a trip. Or he's asleep and needs to be awakened. Call your bell. Call your God. So that they shouted louder following their normal customs. They cut themselves with knives and swords until the blood gushed out. Oh, they thought when they were doing this that bell would answer them. Child of God, you're thinking when you do that that you're going to get an answer or a reply. You will not get anything because the devil just wants to harm you and hurt you. But God says I want to love on you and I want to give you everlasting life. The Bible said they read, talk, rant, 
<laughs> all afternoon, watch this, until the time of the evening sacrifice. But still there was no sound. There still was no reply. There still was no fix. There still was no response. I come to tell you this is an epidemic right now. That people are looking for answers and guidance. Oh, they're trying to relieve themselves. Release and relieve themselves from what they're dealing with. Whether it's popping monies. Or whether it's not cutting themselves. Whether it's trying to commit suicide in some form of a way. It is Satan who you are worshiping. It is Satan who you're manipulating and mutilating your body for. You're saying, I'm just doing this to feel better. But Satan is getting the glory from that. Satan is loving when you do that. Do you belong to Satan or do you belong to God? Why don't you make a declaration today from this day forward? Satan, you will not get anything else from me. I will not give you my body anymore. But this body belongs to God. I present it unto him as a living sacrifice. My body, my soul was bought with a price, which means I don't own myself anymore. And I only do what God tells me to do. Come on, people of God. People are in the world right now. They want to be free. But you and I got the Holy Ghost that is able to set us free. It gives us power to tread over the serpent. That when the serpent comes to bite, I can Hands and stuff on his head. I know you may say that's a metaphor. I know you might say that ain't happening for real. But you can say all you want. To God be the glory for everything he has allowed me to overcome. And I've overcome that serpent with the blood of lamb and by the word of my testimony. You don't know what I dealt with. You don't know how I felt growing up in the neighborhood. You don't know how I felt not having a father. But I've overcome it. And you can overcome it too. Amen. You don't know when I've done things or what I've done. Amen. But I overcome it. Why? By the blood of the Lamb. Yes, By the word. Yes. My testimony. Yes. You can't testify without a testimony. Yes. You'll never be able to testify that God helped you to go and get through that or that you won the battle with through the Lord Jesus Christ unless you face something and you defeat it. You have no testimony. So I go home with this. Deliverance is in Jesus. Deliverance is in Jesus. This man who was tormenting himself because he had wicked, evil spirits oppressing and tormenting him. So the outlet for this man here was to do certain things. The book picks it up in Mark 5, verse 1. So they arrived at the other side of the lake in the region of the Gerasenes, or the Gadarenes. When Jesus climbed out of the boat, a man possessed by an evil spirit came out from the tombs to meet him. How is he possessed? But he's able to get to Jesus. This man lived in the burial caves. Don't just read right over that. He lived in the tombs. Because death was close to him. I'm coming to tell you somebody's living close to death. Death is with you in the car. It's with you on the bus. Death is with you at home. Death is with you on that job. Yes. Death is all around you. Yes. Don't get me wrong. We all go that way. But it is Satan that's trying to get me to go a little earlier. Yes. I come to tell you not his way. Yes. I'm leaving here in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm leaving with Jesus with me. Amen. The Bible says that he's in the tomb. And the Bible says the man lived in a burial cage and could no longer be restrained, even with a chain. Verse 1, whenever he was put into chains and shackles, as he often was, he snapped the chains from his wrist and smashed the shackles. No one was strong enough to subdue him. And day and night, he wandered among the burial caves. You're wandering day and night. You're stressing yourself out because you're trying to deal with your problems. Bible says in the hills howling and screaming 
cutting himself a sharp stone. When Jesus was still some distance away, the man saw him, ran to meet him. He bowed low before him. And with a shrieking high pitch, that spirit began to scream. Why is the spirit screaming? Because it's in the presence of something greater than it is. Yeah. That spirit, that spirit began to say, ah! you hear why are you interfering with me Jesus son of the most high God in the name of God I beg you don't don't torture me isn't it funny how the spirit is telling God don't torture me but that demonic spirit been torturing him yeah. <laughs> did you hear what I just said yeah Child of God, the Spirit wants to torment you and I. Yes. But when it comes to Jesus torment them, they say, please, right. have mercy. Yes. Have mercy. Yes. Don't do this. Yes. I want to know how can the unclean spirit pray and ask for mercy. And you and I won't get to God to say, God, give me mercy. Yes. Have mercy upon me. Deliver me from this. Yes. Deliver me from this, God. I need your help, Lord. Yes. The book says what Jesus had already said to the Spirit, come out of the man. You evil spirit. People of God, deliverance is available. It is available. It is available. Yes. And Mark 5 and 17, when you read it in the scripture and we go home here, people knew this man had an issue. And the Bible says they came to Jesus. Notice what it says. They came. Pull it up for me, please. I'm not, that's not the right verse. Go to Mark chapter 5. And I want us to go down and read it when they came to Jesus. The Bible says in Mark chapter 5. Notice the scripture says. Verse 15, please. And they came to Jesus and see him. Who is him? The one that was cutting himself. They came to see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion. What was he doing? Sitting, clothed, and in his right mind. I know many people have said over the years, Lord, help me to be clothed in my right mind. That ain't what this is. I don't know where they got that from. You're breaking up the scripture or you're trying to add it together. The Bible says the man that was dealing with these problems is sitting and he's clothed and he's in his right mind. Somebody needs to be clothed. Somebody needs to be sitting in the presence of God. And God is trying to get you back in your right mind. Yeah. If you're here today, if you're here today, just submit, yes. resist, and he'll flee. If you're here, young people, let me get the young people to come. Let me get my young people to come. Young people, I want you to come to this altar. Mom, dads, aunties, if you have children that are coming, come and stand behind them. Come and stand behind your little ones. We want God to keep this from them. And if they're dealing with we want God to deliver them. Yes. Deliver them. Deliver them. Deliver them. We want God to deliver them. Yes. Mom and daddy, there's something that you deal with. Suicidal thoughts. If you're dealing with some things, 
Maybe it's not Molly, but maybe you're hooked on the medication. Maybe you feel like you can't survive yes. without it. Yes. It has now become an addiction. It's become a drug now. Maybe someone in here has gone through times of cutting. Maybe you thought about it. Maybe it's depression. But God is saying that he wants to deliver if you want to be delivered. Let's pray. Mom, you cover, Dad, you cover your children. And I would ask God to cover you as the Lord will cover me. Begin to put your hand on your children. Pray for them. Pray like their lives and soul depend on. Let them hear you pray. Let them hear you cry out for them. Let them hear. That your heart goes deep. Deep for them. That one day your, da your daughter doesn't come home. Your son, you have to visit him in the jail cell. And he's out of his mind. It didn't start off like this. You remember, it didn't start off like this. They were not like this. Something crept in. Something got in. And you and I will say, I could have prayed harder. I should have prayed harder. I should have prayed harder because some of us have dealt with the drugs. We've dealt with the addictions. We've dealt with some of the things. Don't let it get to them. Don't let it get to them. Don't let them go. Don't let them be so easily introduced. Pray for them now. Father, in the name of Jesus. We come, Lord God, before you. We're here to cover our children. I'm asking that you cover us. Cover mom and dad, God. You said to train them up, Lord God, in the way that they should go. That when they are old, they won't depart from what we have taught them and trained them. Father, you teach us through the word of God that when the children of Israel were born, the first thing that the mother said to the child when they laid the child on the mother's chest was, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Jesus, I'm asking you, you're that one God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Here is a family I present before you, God. They're at this altar. I'm asking that you cover them. I'm asking that the blood of Jesus, Lord God, that you cover them. I'm asking cover the children. I'm asking God renew their mind. Forgive the heart of them that have cut themselves. That have done damage to themselves. Father, we're sorry. But being the parents that we are, we should have done better. But God, I believe we can start today. Help us, God. Help us. Their soul depends on it. Her soul depends on it. His soul depends on it. Father, we lay our hands on our children. We hold them tight. We love them, God, but I know you love them more. In the name of Jesus, come on, grab your children. Grab and pray for them. Pray for her right now. You don't know that the enemy is tempting her right now. You don't know that they see something upon you too. You don't know that somebody tried to talk to them. You don't understand right now that the devil wants them. In the name of Jesus, touch God. Those that are feeling lonely, touch those that feel like they don't have a family, touch those that the enemy is talking to, touch her, God, touch him. In the name of Jesus, it is. We're facing the real devil, but greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We know that you are God. You made the devil, and the devil will be tormented, and he will fall forever in the lake of fire with the false prophets and those that are unbelievers. 
the whoremongers, the sorcerers. Lord God, I ask that you help us today at this altar. Somebody is going to be delivered. Somebody call on the name of Jesus. Somebody, every spirit has unclean. You must leave now. Mother and father, cover them. Because when that spirit comes out, it's looking for somebody to go into. When we pray the spirit out, cover them. That spirit wants to put it out. Cover them. Walk in faith 
in victory. If you have the Holy Ghost, you have the greater power. You have the higher authority. Walk in the Spirit. Don't be a home to the flesh. Cover us, God, as we meet this place. In Jesus' name. Amen. Clap your hands one more time in Jesus' name. If you need to be baptized, we say to you, come on. Get baptized tonight if you've never been baptized. Sister, brother, if you've never gone down and get your sins washed away, sin cannot inherit, will not go to heaven. You will not be seen. But if you call on the name of Jesus Christ, as the Bible tells us to do that, call on the name of the Lord, thou shalt be saved. And you will call on the name of the Lord, all of your sins will be washed away. Because that name is above every name. That name has the power and the blood. It will wash away every wrong thing you've done.